made it to Picton. <laughs> we have about an hour, 45 minutes until we get on the train. We've checked in for the train. Um, so on our bags get transferred. So we have like 45 minutes to kill. So I'm just going to find a bathroom and we're going to go to a toasty bar. This one on Instagram sent to me. <laughs> so we're going to get toasty, come back, get on the train and get the train to Christchurch. Christchurch, it is, what day is it? Tuesday, no, it's not Tuesday. My laptop is open and my laptop is not adjusted to the time difference, which is actually really handy. It is Wednesday at 8.24 in the morning. Sam has gone to get some coffee. We are going, we're having a pretty chill day today. We've not really had a chill day since we arrived. And I think it's one of the days it's just the two of us. Mm, we start our road, road tripping tomorrow. So we're seeing Christchurch today. But we don't really have a, a jet. Well, we have an agenda, but we don't really have like a rush. We're just gonna do some laundering, have a quiet morning. We're cooking in tonight, so we'll have a quiet evening. Quiet, quiet is the name of the game today. Um, I am going to two yarn shops today, and I think they'll probably be the last two yarn shops of the trip. Um, I don't have a whole lot of bag space, so I've told myself that if I want, if there's yarn I want to buy, it's totally fine. I will buy it. I will post it home to myself because I'd rather get the yarn and worry about bag space. And I checked online and I think I could ship like two kilos of yarn, which is nowhere near as much as that, but I could ship up to two kilos for I think about $50, which is like 25 pounds, which is about the, this, the price of an extra skate of yarn. So expensive, but not crazy. Um, so yeah, two yarn shops today, I am excited. It is, it's not great weather actually. It's a Sam just, Sam's gone to get coffee and he messaged me saying it's raining on the way to coffee. It is currently raining a little bit. Oh, but it's meant to like brighten up a little bit from 11 and it's gonna be windy today. And then tomorrow's gonna be rainy as well. So not the nice weather, but that's okay. Um, I have got a couple of, I've got a bit early, well, I've got a bit of quiet time this morning because I am working on my Santa test knit call. So I'm actually in this really cozy bed. It's really nice actually. Um, the Santa test knit call is open for a couple of days. I think I might be a little bit behind when this is due to start, it was maybe yesterday, but I have lost track of the time, to be honest. Um, so I'm just sending the pattern out to the testers now. I'll send a pattern out to everyone who wasn't selected as a tester and I'll get the Instagram group set up and basically get the test started, which is quite exciting. Um, I've also had to include, and I put this in the tester call, but I did tell testers that I'm traveling until April 12th and like, I'm not gonna be as responsive um, 
but they knew that when I when they signed up so I'm not as worried but yeah I just want to make sure people know that so yeah a little bit of work this morning before we get going it's quite nice I brought my laptop with me so I can just steal like a little hour or a little 40 minutes I did some video editing on the we had a big drive the other day I did some video editing then so that's been really nice um yeah I think that's everything I'm gonna be taking you with me today and hopefully show you around my first yarn shop stop was Outlaw Yarn and what an incredible little spot. When I got there, I was asked if I wanted a little tour. So here's some footage behind the scenes of their incredible bases and what their setup looks like. Something really interesting about Outlaw Yarns is that they use commercial dye practices like this dyeing uh, vat, but they make small batch yarns. So they load this rack of yarn into the vat and it all gets heated up and the dyes get added and then it all gets washed clean um, in the same way that commercial yarn gets dyed. It was so, so lovely meeting the owner behind Outlaw and uh, some of the employees watching the whole process and even seeing the yarns getting stained up. And of course I took some home with me. They have some absolutely incredible bases. More on that to come. More than one of these skeins made it into my suitcase at home. My second stop was Get Flocked. This is more of a traditional yarn shop than a dye studio and um, showroom like Outlaw was. And they had a great selection of international bases, things like Spin Cycle, a lot of hand dyed bases that I knew, but also some really nice, more local bases. And that is what I ended up purchasing. In Christchurch, there is a yarn company uh, called Wild Earth Yarns. I heard so much about them, but I couldn't. They're, they're um, showroom is a little bit out of the city centre and we did have a car so I was so excited when I saw that they had them on here for sale so I bought some of that amazing pink yarn I also bought some of the natural yarn and you'll see me with knitting, knitting with that later on in this episode the staff are really friendly they have some really cool merchandise and it was super nice to see this in the middle of town on my way to this yarn shop, I also spotted one of my favourite cricket players ever, Kyle Jameson, and had a little fangirl moment because he was just walking in the street. <laughs> so I will always associate this yarn shop with that cricket player, I think, because he was walking right past the door as I was arriving. visited two yarn shops in Christchurch. I got some yarn. I thought I would show you the yarn and talk about the place I visited um, before we head off on our road tripping adventure starting today. So the first yarn shop we went to was Outlaw Yarns. Outlaw Yarn is a little bit outside of the city centre, definitely still walkable um, and it was for us kind of between where we're staying and the city centre so it worked quite well for us. It is in a kind of industrial estate type vibe and they are a showroom and a dye studio. And when I arrived here, the lovely owner, whose name I completely forgotten, she introduced me to all of her employees and kept referring to their names and I've forgotten her name. Um, but uh, she offered to give me a little tour and that was so fun. I really enjoyed it. I've never had a tour of like a dye studio or any anything other than me walking around the front, like a storefront. So it was really nice. So when you first arrive into the shop, they've got a desk and they've got the, um, I think they're calling it the showroom. And that is where they have their yarn on the wall and they have their different bases. They had a couple of really interesting different bases. I will, I got two of them, so I will show what those are. 
And then through those doors, they're currently in the middle of like moving where the showroom is and where everything is. So it's a little bit box heavy and storage heavy. But what is really interesting about Outlaw Yarns is the way that they die. So they used to just be a yarn shop. And then at the start of the pandemic, um, they struggled with supply and everything that they stock is only local. Uh, it's all New Zealand based. But even, even with that, they were having supply chain issues. So that is when they decided to start dyeing yarn. It took about, it took a while to get everything fully set up and they have been dyeing for about 18 months now. They dye, um, the thing that's really interesting about the way that they do it is that a lot of hand dyers dye in pans, which I think as a knitter, like that's what I'm familiar with seeing on like Instagram and stuff. So like those big catering pans, and they put like six skeins in there and then they kind of like hand paint or like hand add the dye and like add the dye in, bake it in an oven and then rinse it off. But what Outlaw do is they basically have like a mini commercial operation. So they have this vat, which is this big tall machine um, that they have to use a crane to operate. And they put like a cage full of yarn into the vat with all the chemicals and it takes about 24 hours to process. So I thought that was so interesting. It's again, I've not really got a comparison other than via via, like what I kind of know, but they... Um, use so each of the cages hold five kg of yarn the yarn that i saw um i actually can't remember what it's called but it is 80 percent merino 20 percent new zealand half breed which is the name of it it's not like two breeds together it's called a half breed that's the name of the breed um and it's got a lovely like soft brown color together with a very white merino makes for a really nice heathered base so they take that off the cone they wind that up into skeins, they hang the skeins on the rack, 5kg at a time, they prepare all the chemicals, and chemicals like the dye and the vinegar and like the things to set it, and then they put that in, they like use this big crane, which didn't, I didn't see, but I saw the crane system, where they hook it onto the top of the yarn, and then they drop it into the vat, and then it stays in there for the most part for 24 hours, so the water is really hot, and then at the end of the time period they drain the water away, most of the dye is gone, and it's all fixed onto the yarn. I just thought it was so interesting. And then um, they skate it up and label it as per usual. It dries, obviously. And it was just a really, really cool shop. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I got four skeins of yarn there, which is more than I was planning to get. But here we go. So um, their base, their, their own make is called Rebel Yarn. All the yarn is named after um, song lyrics and not that I'm going to be able to work out what this is. So this first base is their light version of the 8020, so the Merino half breed. Um, and I got it in this amazing, it's actually almost the exact color of this cushion behind me, this like ochre color. I think I'm going to probably make a fingering weight toaster with this because story of my life, I just buy toaster quantities of yarn. Um, I'm not a huge hand eye person. And I'm quite a big fan of commercial yarn, although this does come out so even that it basically is commercial. Um, but yeah, I'm not a huge, I don't make a lot of hand dyed projects. And so usually with like individual skeins like this, I'm either thinking Sophie scarf or I'm thinking toasted tea <laughs> or like a hat or something. So this is called the golden, that golden shore. I have no idea what that lyric is from. It is woolen spun. So it is very, very, I mean, it's only a, um, 50 gram thing um, but it is super super lightweight I'm realizing I do not have enough here for oh no I don't have enough for stuff. that's fine um, it's super super lightweight and I guess the yardage is the same as the Kinross 4 applied to me so that is kind of where my brain went with this and yeah I've got three skeins of it it's not quite morning yet here so the sun is I'm still a little bit artificial light but I think that's a pretty accurate color a real like golden golden olive let's go with that yeah, it is 200 yard, 193 meters per 50 grams. So I guess I have just under 600 meters. So yeah, for me, I can pretty comfortably, I think, get a toasted tea out of that one. And I don't have any, I have one toasted tea fingering weight um, in cotton merino, and I think another one would be quite a good idea. And then if this is like light and bouncy, very light, this is like the chunky boy. It is really plump and this is darkness DK. Uh, the colourway is postcards from another day and this was the reason I bought this is because there was some of this drying when I got the tour and it felt so amazing 
Um, it is 55% coloured merino as opposed to the white merino, 38% merino and 7% cashgora, which is cashmere angora. Um, it is 258 meters, so like a light DK. And honestly, I could knit a sweater quantity of this and maybe will. Like, I'm definitely tempted. I want to knit something, probably a hat, um, with this size. I probably, or maybe even like a little scarf might be a nice idea. I have um my bright orange Angora Sophie, Scott, Sophie scarf. It's quite small. And I wear that a lot. So I might check what my yardage was on that one and see if I could make another one of that. Um, oh my goodness, a cat just appeared at the door of the place we're staying and I was not expecting to see a cat. And it gave me the fright of my life. <laughs> it's a very cute little collar on. It's looking at me like it's expecting to get inside here and I'm not letting it in. Um, yeah, so really lovely, like a very like grassy green. This really reminded me a lot of like, I think both of these um, reminded me a lot of the ferry over and the sort of first peak we got of the South Island. And so I really loved using those colors. So yeah, we've got four skeins. I don't think any of these will get touched before we get home, but that's fine. Um, really lovely experience there. It started pouring with rain as I left. Um, but oh, sorry, I think I was saying, I would consider designing with this. I definitely have a pattern that would require a yarn of similar weight to this. Um, so I might, when I, I'll knit this up at some point beforehand and see what I think about how it takes texture and things. And this could be a strong contender. Okay, I then we walked into town, we did a bit of wandering, went to a few new places. Um oh, that cat is doing oh it's just eating a bug. Lovely. Can you tell I'm a dog person? <laughs> I mean they also eat bugs, but um we walked into town and it was pretty bad weather, honestly. It was just raining pretty much non-stop and I was not dressed for it. I left my raincoat at the house because the forecast was zero rain and then it rained all morning. So that is my lesson is don't take the forecast in Christchurch seriously. We then went, well, I went to, oh, actually I'm walking from the first yarn shop to the second yarn shop. We walked past a famous cricket player, Kyle Jameson, who is a New Zealand cricket player. And before we came to New Zealand, one of the things we kept talking on and off about is which rugby player and which cricket player would you be most excited to see if you ran into them? Because New Zealand's not a very big place and there are a lot of very, very good sports players. So I was like, there's a chance we'll see one of them. We did actually in Auckland see um, Tupelotu, who is the, was an All Black, might be an All Black in the future, and is the captain of the Blues, which is the Auckland Super Rugby team. Um, although I didn't know him before we saw him, but then Sam's dad knew who he was. And then, um, my top pick for cricket player was Kyle Jameson and we're walking in the street and I was just like <gasps> like patting Sam on the hand and he's like a six foot five cricket player so it was very obvious to see him and it was that look of being like I've been spotted keep my head down so I didn't stop him but I saw Kyle Jameson and um, which was pretty cool um so on the it was right outside of Get Flocked which is the next yard shop I went to so then I went to Get Flocked and uh, they got a very cute bag <clears throat> this is more sorry <coughs> Definitely more like traditional yarn shoppy vibes. Uh, similar to a lot, I think a lot of yarn shop I've been to, quite similar. Not a huge shop, two main walls. Uh, the left hand wall was all imported. So they, like for the most part, what I can remember, it was Hedgehog Fibers and Spin Cycle. Um, both of which I can get home and neither of which, to be honest, I just don't want to start knitting with Spin Cycle because I feel like if I start knitting with Spin Cycle, I will not stop knitting with Spin Cycle and it is so expensive. Um, so if I was ever to knit with something similar, I think I'd try and design in an alternative because I don't think I could handle how expensive it is. <laughs> I just don't want, yeah, I don't know. It's just so pricey. Um, so they had that and they had hedgehog fibers, which again, I could get in the UK. Um, it's very like super bright, hand eye super wash, like not really my, not my cup of tea. Beautiful. And I like admire the skeins, but I don't really ever knit with it. Um, the other wall then was all New Zealand yarns. Well, a little bit of New Zealand hand dyed yarn, but the base of that was the same base that I already bought in Auckland. So I didn't look at the hand dyed, but they had a couple of commercial brands and I bought some of that. So um, one of them, so this is the one I had in my hand first. Um, uh, 
these two balls. So these are, oh, did I even check they're the same Dutch? I didn't know what they are. So um, there is a mill just a little bit outside of Christchurch called Wild Earth Yarns. And I think in an ideal scenario with all the time in the world, it'd be lovely to go to that one. But um, it's a little bit outside the city. It's not in the direction that we're going. We're heading to the airport to pick up a car and then leaving a different, like, opposite way so it doesn't make sense for us to stop there but this is their yarn which is stocked and um, this is their Eden 8 ply I will say they have a lot of bases that are very similar so they'll have like I think they had two DK weight merino same yarded with different names so I presume they're spun differently um but this one is just beautiful it is New Zealand Polworth grown and processed in Canterbury so it's all like we're in Canterbury now and um, it's like the region that we're in this is the, I mean, it's called Daisy, but in my opinion, it's just plain, like neutral. Um, it is 110 meters per, geez, that's pretty plump actually. It's 110 meters per 50 grams. Um, but that is a, yeah, which means it's like thicker than say a cascade, but to me that feels pretty plump. It's lovely, it's very, very soft. All of the yarns on that wall were incredibly soft, like for all being non superwash. When I think of like non superwash local wools, I'm expecting something to be a little bit scratchy. Nothing was scratchy. It was all like baby yarn soft. So I picked up this and then I thought, oh, but I'm trying to knit with more bright colours. Uh, so then I picked up two more skeins, but then I decided that I still wanted to get some Wild Earth yarns. So I went back and got this one too. Well, I went back. I went from the till back to the wool and then back to the checkout again. <laughs> So this is Vespers, which is Burnt Hill Yarn Company. Um, it is 100% New Zealand Merino. Um, and I also thought, New Zealand Merino, like I should get 100% Merino because it's what they're just so famous for. I have 50 grams, 106 meters. Um, does this have a colorway name? Oh yeah, it's called Candy Pop, which is not a massive surprise because this is the color. Really pink. I realized after the fact that I actually have a, a whole skein of cast. I want to make a beanie out of this. I have a whole skein of Cascade that would be perfect um, for this and maybe I should have just used that, but it will be a fun hat for the journey. Um, and then last but not least, I bought a little pin. Um, there's a there's a bird which is native to New Zealand called Tui. And it is also um, the name of one of Sam's childhood dogs that he is very fond of. And I thought it was very cute to see a pin that also had a little, it's a Tui pin and it also has a little woolly hat on. And I just thought it was really cute. So I'm not really a big pin fan. Um, but I thought it was a nice little thing and I sometimes have them on my project bag so I'll pop one on my project bag and then they asked if I would like a bag so I got one there were two employees well there was the owner uh, who I didn't register as the owner until he told me he was the owner because he was just super chatty and um, so I walked in he was like hi and he was at the back of the shop like packing a backpack up so I thought he was a customer um, and he was like super chatty and then I logged then I was like oh he's, he's the owner or he works here and then he, called, he mentioned he was the owner um, and I never, like, I never assume anyone knows who I am. That sounds really like, do you know who I am? No, but I just assume that I just, I'm just a shopper, right? That's what I'm there for. Um, so he'd been talking for a few minutes and he was like, oh, and how's the podcast? And I was like, oh, okay, you, 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 follow, you watch the podcast. So, and um, that was quite sweet. He's also a designer um, who I hadn't heard of, but has some um, great, like, patterns for men. He was working on a very cool, like, shawl collar sweater with a really interesting... The, the collar worked in two pieces and it is seamed with an eye cord and it was it was really cool um so i think all of his patterns are on the get flocked instagram page you can find them through there and he's very very knowledgeable on sheep breeds i think he's like a qualified shearer and a spinner and like he knows everything there is to know about sheep and um, gave me the entire history of Ramb uh, Rambouillet, Rambouillet, which uh i didn't know but now i know which is quite cool uh so yeah definitely a cool shop they have a knit night weekly it actually was last night we didn't i didn't go but um i think if you're a local and you're looking for like a knitting community i think that'd be a really good shop for it and yeah it was really nice so it was nice to go to a few yarn shops i also repacked my bag this morning and everything fits with a little bit of space so for some reason i was worried that i had bought quite a lot of yarn and things weren't going to fit anymore but that is not the case um which is good so what i now need to decide is it's colder on the south island than i anticipated and I did not bring a beanie with me and actually I don't really have a hat that I like wearing all that much at the minute uh, so I would like to make myself a beanie so both of these are destined to become a beanie the pink and the white 
which one do I knit up? I'm drawn to the pink, I think, more. I think the pink will be a bit more fun. Um, we're going like to Fjordland, and like part of me thinks that for the dramatic pictures, this would be better, but also the pink might be a fun pop of colour. So one of these I'm gonna cast on in the drive today because I want to have it. Like I want to have it and be able to wear it. Um, maybe I will. Neither are scratchies, it's not even a consideration. Like they will both become hats, just which one becomes a hat first. I don't know, you'll find out later, I guess, because I will continue to knit it. But yeah, that was my day. Um, and today we set off and continue driving down south. And we're gonna, <clears throat> today's journey is from here in Christchurch um, across uh, Arthur's Pass and we're going to Hokitika on the west coast of the South Island. So stay tuned. Porter's Viewpoint, Porter's Pass, and I don't know what to expect. <laughs> it's pretty epic. My Maori needs some work, but we're at a place called Kura Tawiti. It is an incredible rock formation. Um, literally at the side of the road. <laughs> um, this place has been here for a long time. It's got particular significance to one group of Maori, which understandably, if you come here and you believe in a connection to the land, this land is pretty special. And it's been blessed. It's got a cloak on it from a Maori chief. And you get to just explore walk around, see all the big rocks, <laughs> lots of big rocks. It's beautiful. I can't believe it re it's real. It's just, it's crazy. We drove across Arthur's Pass. We are about 20 minutes outside of the place that we're staying tonight, which is Hokotika. Um, Sam's hot to take some pictures. <laughs> and I think just like stretch his legs because that was the, that was a bit of a panic worthy drive. <laughs> um, it's all like one, one uh, lane each way. It's pretty high speed. It's like 100 kilometers an hour speed limit. And of course everyone's driving over that. And we're in a pretty small rental. It's not a big rental car. A lot of people in New Zealand have got trucks, so yeah, it was a bit nerve wracking coming down off the going like going up was fine somehow, but coming down was just a bit scary. <laughs> um, and then we took a left turn; it was marked as a left turn, um, and we ended up on this ridiculous road. And there were all these warning signs like extreme caution, very windy, very rough road, and we're like, okay, yeah, look, let's not do this. So we back onto the main road taking a slightly longer route round, but we're only 20 minutes away. And I cast on my hat this morning. Uh, we made pretty good progress. I'm using the Pearl Soho Classic Rabini because I always use a Pearl Soho Classic Rabini. And I guess I've done the brim at this point. If I fold it up. This yarn is lovely. It's really nice to work with. It's 100% merino. And I made most of a bit of progress to the first ball. I actually... Yeah, we were having dinner tonight. Oh, last night we just sat and like watched Friends and chilled and it was really nice. And tonight I'd like to do the same. Maybe, maybe watch some 
um, maybe do some reading or something like that, but chill out, have some dinner, maybe have a little glass of wine or a little beer and forget about the car until tomorrow. <laughs> Oh yeah, and that is it. There's so many huge lorries. It's quite a popular route for like freight. So there are just these massive, massive lorries on these tiny little bends. Oh, oh. Makes me feel a bit nauseous thinking about it. Anyway, oh, one last thing. I got some Easter stitch markers before I came. And I'm finally using one. That's super cute. So yeah, almost wrapped up for our this day of driving. Tomorrow we're driving Oh, we're going to the Kiwi, I think we're going to the Kiwi Sanctuary and then we're driving tomorrow to a place called Paringa which as far as I know is pretty much the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Good morning from Hokitika. We stayed here last night. Um, it's beautiful. It's uh, the mountains are one way, the beach is the other. Yeah, it's really nice. We got in pretty late. We just did a lot of walks to the supermarket, got some nice tasty food, walked along the beach, came back and chilled out. Um, and it is currently just a little before 10am and today we're driving from here in Hokitika to a place called Paringa which as far as I'm aware is the middle of nowhere like there's not a city, there's not a town, there's just a nice Airbnb and it breaks our drive quite nicely and on the way we're firstly gonna go to the Kiwi Centre and see some Kiwi birds <laughs> I'm so excited um, we're gonna do a couple of stops along the way and I think we're gonna do a little hike around Lake Matheson which apparently on a very still day, today is very crisp very still, very clear skies. So we can see that blue sky yet? Kind of. No, it's a very clear blue sky. <laughs> it is, it's pretty cold. Um, apparently there are really nice views across to Iraqi or Mount Cook, which is a pretty cool distinct mountain in the South Island. So I'm excited. So that's the plan for today. I think every single picture and bit of footage of me from this drive is going to be me in my lauder sweater, my jeans and my hiking shoes because it's cold and I didn't really pack. I just packed like I packed hiking trousers but honestly my jeans are warmer. I'm an enthusiastic driver. Um, and my lauder has been amazing. It's currently I think like five degrees Celsius which is pretty, pretty chill but Chunky cables are the answer. So yeah, time to go to the Kiwi Centre. Been driving for about two hours I think. Um, two and a half hours, not very long. We keep stopping places because everywhere looks so good. <laughs> it is about 2.30 in the afternoon. We've got one big stop left today. We're gonna go do a hike called Lake Matheson which apparently has views over of Iraqi like reflected in the water and then we're gonna go on to our Airbnb for the night. And I'm just knitting away. I'm making quick progress on this. I've only got a little bit more to go. Um, and I got some of this because I suddenly realised arriving in the South Island, it was maybe colder than I expected it would be. Um, and I didn't bring a beanie with me. But I've got the door open. I've got my sweater off. It's so warm. It's glorious.
at least five times a day we pull over and I'm just like, how is this even real? On this episode of how is this even real? This is just the side of the car, like look at this. These are the Alps, the South Island Alps, this water, it's just... The car is just parked up there. <laughs> how is this even real? Good morning from the west coast of New Zealand. I've had to just restart filming because Sam didn't know I was out here and he just walked fully naked <laughs> across the door. So yeah, I'll edit that, edit that out. Um, we are somewhere on the west coast between Fox Glacier and Hast. Uh, we're about an hour from anywhere, which is kind of lovely. The Wi-Fi is terrible, but the views are great. So that's kind of a sign of how remote you are, I think. Um, one day less of driving. So today we are driving to Queenstown, a couple of stops on the way, we're gonna stop in Hast, then we're gonna stop in Wanaka, and then we're gonna stop in Arrowtown, and then we're gonna wrap up and drop the car off at Queenstown. And we're gonna meet back up with Sam's parents tonight. They flew down yesterday. They flew from Wellington to Queenstown um, because we've got another couple of days of adventure. I think today will be the last episode in this video because the last couple of days in New Zealand we are spending on a cruise in Doubtful Sound, like an overnight boat. Uh, it's called a cruise, it's not like a cruise ship, it's quite a small, it only sleeps 36. Um, and then our, and then we're going to a sheep station. So I think I'll save them and put them in the same video. So today's the last one for this video. So my hat is almost done. Um, I cast it on, it's quite nice because I guess I've knit on it every day of our road trip which is quite a nice, it wasn't really the plan but I quite like that that's how it's worked out um, and it's weird, it's cold but it's not in the sun, like I'm sitting here in the sun I'm not cold, the sun still has quite a lot of heat to it um, but that air is still pretty chilly so the first day that we were in Christchurch it was raining and I was like, oh God, it's cold. I'm not packed warm enough for this. Um, but actually in the sun, it's not like cold. So we'll see if my hat comes into, into use while we're here. If not, I live in Scotland. It will get plenty of use in there. Um, so I started my decreases. It's the Pearl Soho Classic Red Beanie, which is pretty much my favorite hat to follow. I don't love the decreases, but I don't have an alternative. And I've tried a few alternatives and I've not gotten on with them very well. Um, so I'm just sticking with this one. I might... I tried the hue, no, the weekend hat from Pearl, from Petite Knit and I had an issue with the decreases there too but I think that was user error so maybe I'll try that with the next one. So it's pretty big. I wanted to try and squeak out as much of this yarn as possible because I don't really think I'll use any more. But yeah, it's going to be really cute. It's um, almost done so it's going to have a little bit of space at the top or I could give it a really wide brim if I don't want it to have like a... and I've got about this much left. So I'm on the decreases, I'll get that finished today and then I'm going to continue working on my Myrtle vest which is just stocking it and then I might cast on the second hat for the ferry because I think it'd be nice to have a little like very portable project while we're on the ferry. I think when we're like we'll leave our stuff down below and then we'll be able to carry stuff up and around so that should be good and yeah what else not much I'm excited I'm glad we're dropping the car off today but I'm excited for our last day of driving and the ferry and the sheep station were in my head like our very last things of the trip. So I'm kind of sad that that's tomorrow already. Um, although we still have, today's Saturday, we don't leave until Thursday, so we still have some time. Um, but it feels like we're getting to the tail end of our trip, which means I'm kind of sad. I don't really want to leave. <laughs> um, but cool, let's get the car parked, get the car packed and get driving. my hat I have to weave the ends in but it's done it is very long da, 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 da. oh it's cute ready for some fjordland perfect yay
So we've just driven, we're at the top of New Zealand's highest highway, 1,080 metres high, according to the app on our phone. <laughs> and the views are insane. My ears are popping the whole way up. The, I'm really emotional. Like, I can't believe this. I kind of want to cry. <laughs> so cool.